We're on 7.2 today, which is absolute value functions. That's on pages 368 to 379 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is to demonstrate understanding of the absolute value of real numbers and equations and functions involving the absolute value of linear and quadratic functions. Our lesson objectives, number one, to be able to understand how taking the absolute value of a function affects the graph of the function. That's really key. The graph of these functions is what we're focusing on today. Uh, number two, to learn how to write an absolute value function as a piecewise function. And number three, to learn what an invariant point is and how to find it on a graph of a function and by looking at the equation of a function. So we know that when we take the absolute value of a number, the result is always positive. So for example, we had like the absolute value of negative three the other day, and that was equal to three. Even if you took the absolute value of five, that was just equal to a regular five. So what does it look like when you actually take the absolute value of an entire function? So the function that we're gonna look at is f of x equals two x minus five. I've graphed it right here. You can see it has an x-intercept of um, five over two. And remember how to get x-intercepts is that we would let y equal zero, and then we would solve for x. And that means that 2x is equal to 5, and then x is equal to 5 over 2, which is 2 and a half. There's our x-intercept right there. So when we're talking about the absolute value of an entire function, which I'm going to draw in green, the absolute value of 2x minus 5, well, we know this concept of absolute value means that whatever we have is always positive. So if we take a look at this function, it is positive wherever it's above the x-axis, and that is anything to the right of 2x minus 5, or which is 5 over 2 this point right here. So this part here, we have to take the absolute value of it. So if we take the absolute value of a positive um, chunk of this graph, it acts just like this absolute value of five here. It equals the positive value. But if we take the absolute value of the negative, it has to equal the positive. So here, where the value here is negative one, if we were to take the absolute value of that, it would be positive one. If we take the absolute value of where it's equal to negative two down here, well, that would be a positive two. So it equals negative two right about there. And if we just keep on taking points on this graph where it's below the x-axis, taking the absolute value of them, it just makes it positive. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna find that you just get a whole line. So this line coming in here, the one in green, is now the absolute value of two x minus five. So when you take the absolute value of a function, you need to know what that function looks like. And you need to know that um, when you take the absolute value of something, it always becomes positive. So anything that was negative now becomes positive. So your absolute value functions will only exist above the x-axis. So here's our uh, absolute value of 2x minus 5 again. And let's just take a look at a few features of this graph. Number one, there's something called an invariant point. And an invariant point is the point on a function that doesn't change when you take the absolute value of it. And the only point on every absolute value function that doesn't change, well, these are all invariant points, I guess, because they're all positive, but it's this point right here. You can't, when you take the absolute value of zero, you get zero. Anything that was below the x-axis is now above the x-axis. And since there are clearly two different parts or pieces of this function, we can write this absolute value of two x minus five as what we call a piecewise function. So if you take a look on the right-hand side, so this thing, when we write it as two different pieces, it looks like 2x minus 5, which is just a, a line with a slope of 2 that would have a y-intercept of negative 5. And that is everything to the right of um, 2 and a half. And that is if x is greater than or equal to 5 over 2. That's, this is why finding this x-intercept is really important. Now, if you look on the left-hand side, it looks like it has a um, y-intercept of positive 5. But the slope here is exactly opposite this slope. It's negative 2. So this thing looks like a negative 2x minus 5, just the negative version of 2x minus 5, if x is less than 5 over 2. And this is what we mean by a piecewise function. There's definitely two different chunks here, one where it's increasing and one where it's decreasing. Um, and the original function was 2x minus 5, and that is on the right hand side of 5 over 2, which means the negative version of that very function is uh, where it's less than 5 over 2. Here's our last example. Here's an equation of uh, f of x equals x squared minus x minus 2. You can tell that it has two x intercepts. It's a parabola. You should know that already. Um, so we're going to answer a few questions. It says, what are the invariant points? Well, we have two invariant points at this point. We have an invariant point here, and that's at x equals 2. And we have another invariant point at x equals negative 1. What's the domain and range of this original function? Well, we know the domain of the original function is xer. It's everything from right to left. And we know the range of it 
looks like it goes down to about uh, negative two quarters. So y is going to be greater than or equal to negative two and a quarter. Um, now, when, if we were to find the absolute value of this thing, which I should have written in here, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to try and find the absolute value. I'm going to do that in green. Again, anything that's above the x-axis stays as positive. So we're okay with this chunk here and we're okay with that chunk there. Anything below the x-axis, we have to take the absolute value of. So if we take the absolute value of, again, like negative one, we're gonna get a positive one. So it's gonna look something like that. Now notice this green point is, should be directly above the height of negative one. And over here, we have the same thing. And if we go down to the vertex, which we said is about negative two and a quarter, take the absolute value of that, we should get about positive two and a quarter. So that would be something like that. So your absolute value function of a quadratic looks about the same until we get to this part that um, is underneath the uh, x-axis. And then that means that it has to be kind of just reflected in that uh, x-axis. So it just gets flipped up over here. So the domain of the new function is still xer, but the range of the new function, it goes as low as zero, but then it um, increases again. And so it never breaks that x-axis, never goes below the x-axis. So then we have y is greater than or equal to zero. And how do we write this as a piecewise function? Well, if we're gonna say the absolute value of x squared minus x minus two, we know that it looks like a regular x squared minus x minus two. If x happens to be greater than two, greater than or equal to two, and x happens to be less than negative one, and then it looks like the negative value of that function. So imagine if you just um, change this to a negative x squared, changed all the signs on here, it would just flip this parabola upside down. Um, it would be a negative x squared minus x minus two if x was between negative one and two. So we would say, make that a double inequality. So x is greater than negative one, but it's less than uh, two. Now I've made a mistake, I shouldn't have the equal signs in there. If I've got the equal signs in the top part, I definitely can't have them uh, in the bottom part. So in summary, you need to be able to graph a normal function. And we're just talking about lines and quadratics. So if you can't graph a parabola or a line, you're going to have to brush up on that sort of stuff. If you want to be able to graph the absolute value of that function, any part of the function that appears under the x-axis, which we call negative, now appears above the x-axis, which is now positive x-intercepts of f of x end up being invariant points when you find the absolute value of f of x. That just means any x-intercepts of your original function are now invariant points. They don't change. And absolute value functions can be written as piecewise functions in the following form, where you have the y equals the positive part of f of x if f of x is greater than or equal to zero. That just means if it's positive or above the x-axis. And then wherever it was negative or wherever it was below the x-axis, um, that's where it's the negative of that function. So your assignment is on pages 375 to 379. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.